So in this video, we're going to look at using the table of Laplace transforms to find the Laplace transforms rather than using the definition. And so we're just going to go through a couple of examples of applying a table to a problem. Now, every, te every textbook that you have is going to be a little different in terms of which functions are included in the table and which is not. Uh, this particular table that I'm using is one that I constructed from a number of separate sources and a couple that I, I came up with on my own. Um, and so this table may not look like the table that you have in your book, but most of the common functions, e to the at, sine at, um, power functions, and so on and so forth, are going to have similar examples. You're going to have your sines and your cosines times exponential functions, and then you're going to have a couple of special ones uh, that, again, um, may vary. And then you'll have some formulas that will allow you to find um, some more general functions, either using the definition or um, some other tricks. And we're just going to go through some basic ones. We're not going to try to look at every single possibility but just to get you familiar with applying the table. So uh, we're going to start with t cubed. Uh, we're going to start with some simple cases and then we'll build up some more complex cases. Now we do have a version of the t to the power formula that can be used uh, if uh, we don't have integer powers, uh, but most of the time we're going to have integer powers and so we're going to be using this formula and this is the one we're going to use right now here n is going to be three and so we're going to end up with n factorial which is three factorial divided by s to the three plus one and if we simplify three factorial is one times two times three which is six and then s to the three plus one is s to the fourth and we're going to use the same formula to do t to the fourth. Um, so we would have 4 factorial divided by s to the 4 plus 1 power. And 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So 6 times 4 is 24 over s to the fifth. So this co coefficient is going to keep changing for each of the powers. Now, e to the 2t, we're going to use the e to the at formula, and here a is 2, and so we're going to get 1 over s minus 2. Now, notice that if this is negative, and this was e to the negative 2, then a would be negative 2, and so s minus a negative 2 would be s plus 2. So we're always going to be switching this sign. Now for this function, we need t times an exponential. So let's see if we can scroll down and find t times an exponential or t times another function. Here we go. So one, one formula that we can use is this one, where we have some function, any function, times t. So this is one way to derive it. We could find the Laplace transform and then take its derivative with res this negative derivative with respect to s. Um, some tables, many tables, simply come with a t to the n times an exponential function. So that's a little faster here. So let's go ahead and use that. So here t is just t to the 1. So we're going to have 1 factorial divided by the a comes from the exponential, so this will be s minus 2, uh, and then raised to the power of the power of t plus 1. So in this case, we're going to get 1 over s minus 2 squared. Okay. So let's try a couple more. So here we have an exponential times a trig function. This comes up all the time when you're doing um, solving differential equations. If you have complex roots, this is what you end up with. Um, if they're not 
pure imaginary. So we're going to look for our function. It looks like this one right here, this formula. So a is going to be negative 2, and b is going to be 6. So we're going to apply that formula. So 6 goes up here, that's b. And then in our denominator, we're going to have s plus 2. Notice, um, since a is negative 2, s minus negative 2 will be s plus 2 squared plus b squared, which is 6 squared. And so if we simplify this a little, we get 6 over s plus 2 quantity squared plus 36. Okay, now we just have our regular trig functions. If you have a function that's being multiplied by a constant, you just multiply by the constant. So this is like saying I want to take the Laplace, Laplace transform of sine 3t, and I can pull the 4 outside, just like I can pull the 4 outside the integral. So in that case, I'm just going to have 4 times whatever the Laplace transform of sine 3t is, and then I'm going to have 11 times the Laplace transform of whatever cosine 8t is. So if we go back to our table, we're going to find our regular trig functions. They're up here. So for the sine function, the coefficient of the t inside the sine becomes our constant here and here. And so we're going to end up with 3 for the sine over s squared plus 3 squared, which is 9. And then for the cosine function, the denominator is going to be the same as it would be for the sine function, but instead of a constant up here, you're going to have an s. So this will be s over s squared plus, in this case, 8 squared is 64. And so what we can do is we can bring in the coefficients. 4 times 3 is 12, and 11 times s is 11s. And then the last example I just wanted to do, um, because uh, sometimes it will save you a step in terms of uh, completing the square or, or, or factoring. And so we're going to look down here, see if we have um, any cosh functions. Next page. Ah, here we have cosh and cinch. So again, depending on how comprehensive your table is, you may have other kinds of functions. Um, but these two they're like the regular trig functions, but instead of plus in the denominator, we have a minus sign in the denominator. And sine is the same with the constant in the numerator, and cosine has the s. So in this case, this is going to be 10 times uh, the cosh would be s over s squared minus this a squared, a is 4, so it's going to be 16. And so if I bring the 10 inside, then this just becomes 10s. So again, there's, there's quite a few different functions. Again, depending on the table you have, um, you may prefer to... Um, simplify these or not simplify these. Um, if you don't have cosh in your table, I would recommend rewriting cosh as the definition using exponential functions and then applying the Laplace transform from the table to the exponentials because the exponentials will always be in the table. Uh, the best way to get good at this is to just do a lot of examples. Um, in another video, we'll do some examples of going in the opposite direction. Those generally take more time because we have to match things that are in the table.